Dhamma. Dhamma, Dhamma. Continue reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. We are reading from Canto 4, Chapter 30, Text 41. Manu Swayam Bhur Bhagavan Bhavarshcha. Manu Swayam Bhur Bhagavan Bhavarshcha. Yenye Tapugyana Vishuddha Sattva. Yenye Tapugyana Vishuddha Sattva. Adrishta Para Apiyan Mahimna. Adrishta para apiyam mahimma. Stumanti atotvatma samam grinima. Stumanti atotvatma samam grinima. Translation and purport by Sivan Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta, Samishla Prabhupada. Dear Lord, even great yogis and mystics who are very much advanced by virtue of austerities and knowledge and who have completely situated themselves in pure existence as well as great personalities like Manu, Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva cannot fully understand your glories and potencies. Nonetheless, they have offered their prayers according to their own capacities. In the same way, we, although much lower than these personalities, also offer our prayers according to our own capability. Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Manu, the father of mankind, great saintly persons and also great sages who have elevated themselves to the transcendental platform through austerities and penance as well as devotional service are imperfect in knowledge compared to the Supreme Personality of God. So now, we are speaking of not ordinary living entities, but great, great personalities. Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, who can be greater than them in this universe? So, and Manu, here they are great personalities, but their knowledge compared to God is always imperfect. Only God has perfect knowledge. So we may think, okay, I want to get that same kind of perfection as God has. But we can't. We can just have to our own level. We can't compare to God's knowledge. God is unlimited. We, the soul, we are individual soul. So we are limited. God is unlimited. This is the case with anyone within this material world. No one can be equal to the Supreme Lord in anything. Certainly not in knowledge. You know, God is the one who spoke the Vedas. He has complete knowledge. He has perfect knowledge. That's the reason he's able to speak the Vedas. And, that, and the reason we are not able to speak the Vedas because we have defects. We have four defects. In illusion, cheating, imperfect senses, and make mistakes. Consequently, anyone's prayer to the Supreme Personality of Godhead is never complete. It is not possible to measure the complete glories of the Supreme Lord, who is unlimited. Even the Lord himself in his incarnation as Ananta or Shesha cannot describe his own glories. Although Ananta has many thousands of faces and has been glorifying the Lord for many, many years, he could not find the limit of the glories of the Lord. Thus, it is not possible to estimate the complete potencies and glories of the Supreme Lord. So we are saying God is omnipotent. He is, uh, so his glories are unlimited. We may speak of one glory, but his, because he's unlimited, his glories keep on increasing. What to speak of us? Even Ananta Shesh is not completed speaking the glories of, of God. He's been speaking since time immemorial. So unlimited. 
Nonetheless, everyone in devotional service can offer essential prayers to the Lord. Everyone is situated in a relative position and no one is perfect in glorifying the Lord. So does it mean because we are imperfect, we are not able to properly glorify the Lord, we shouldn't? No, we should. You know, like a child, he can barely speak few sentences. But yet, when he speaks to his parents, they feel so happy. Oh, so cute. You know, but whatever, whatever language, the baby language the child speaks, he endears himself to the parents. So beginning with Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva down to ourselves. Everyone is the servant of the Supreme Lord. We are situated in relative positions according to our own karma. Yet every one of us can offer prayers with heart and soul as far as we can appreciate the Lord's glories. That is our perfection. Even when one is in the darkest region of existence, he is allowed to offer prayers to the Lord according to his own capacity. So we can approach the Lord from wherever we are, wherever, whenever, any situation. He's there with us as Paramatma in our heart. We can offer prayers anytime. The Lord therefore says in Bhagavad Gita 9.32, Mamhi Partha Vyapashritya Ye Pisyo Papa Yonaya Striyo Vaishya Stata Shudra Stepi Yanti Param Katem O Son of Pritha those who take shelter in me, though they be of lower birth, women, messiahs, merchants, as well as shudras, workers, can approach the supreme destination. So there is no, uh, it's not that only certain people or certain community can, of, can approach God. No, anyone in any situation can approach God. If one seriously accepts the lotus feet of the Lord, he is purified by the grace of the Lord and by the grace of the Lord's servant. This is confirmed by Sukadev Goswami. Ye niecha papa yad apa shraya shraya shudhyanti tasmay prabha vishnave namaha bhagavatam canto 2 chapter 4 text 18. One who is brought under the lotus feet of the Lord by the endeavor of the Lord's servant, the spiritual master, is certainly immediately purified. However low-born he may be, he becomes eligible to return home back to Godhead. So whoever is being um, recommended by the pure devotee, you know, so the pure devotee, the spiritual master, he recommends his disciple to God. He brings his disciple to the lotus feet of God. And for sure, in time, he will go back home, back to Godhead. So connecting, connecting to the, this is the importance of connecting to the parampara, to the disciplic succession. Nama Samaya Shuddhaya. Nama Samaya Shuddhaya. Purushaya Paraya Cha. Purushaya Paraya Cha. Vasudevaya Satvaya. Vasudevaya Satvaya. Tubhyam Bhagavate Namaha. Tubhyam Bhagavate Namaha. Dear Lord, you have no enemies or friends. Therefore, you are equal to everyone. You cannot be contaminated by sinful activities. And your transcendental form is always beyond the material creation. You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead because you remain everywhere within all existence. You are consequently known as Vasudev. We offer you our respectful obeisances. So God, he is equal to everyone, no enemy, no friends. Cannot be contaminated by sinful activities. He never does anything sinful. God never does anything sinful. And his, his form is always transcendental. He never takes on a material body. 
And he is omnipresent. We say God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is known as Vasudev because he lives everywhere. The word Vas means to live. Vas, to live. As stated in Brahma Samhita, Ekopiya Sav, Rachayitam Jagat Andakotim, the Lord through his plenary portion, enters into each and every universe to create the material manifestation. He also enters into each and every heart in all living entities and into each and every atom. Also, Parmanu Chayadrastham. So what is this? What is this expansion of God called? In which she is entering every atom and into the heart. Shiro Dakshai Vishnu. That's right. Thank you. He's the Shiro Dakshai Vishnu. He's the Paramatma. Because the Supreme Lord everywhere lives everywhere, he's known as Vasudev. Although he lives everywhere within the material world, he's not contaminated by the modes of nature. So when we say, oh, God is here in Paramatma, and we are here in, Parma, uh, we are here in material world also. <laughs> so, but there's a difference. We take a material body. God never takes a material body. His body is always transcendental, even when he's in the material world. He cannot be controlled by modes of nature. He's the creator of the modes of nature. They can't cover him. He's the controller of the modes of nature. He tells them. He's the lawmaker. The Lord is therefore described in Ishopanishad as a papa with them. He's never contaminated by the modes of material nature. We get covered. This is the difference between us and God. We get covered by modes of nature. But God never. When the Lord descends to this planet, he acts in many ways. He kills demons and performs acts not sanctioned by the Vedic principles. I'm sorry. That is, that is acts considered sinful. So he acts in many ways. He kills demons and performs acts not sanctioned by the Vedic principles. That is acts considered sinful. Even though he acts in such a way, he is never contaminated by his action. He is therefore described here as Shuddha, meaning always free from contamination. Because um, God, he... He's sorry, he's I think friends. you're not feeling well. So do you want me to read and you can explain? Because I oh, think you're having some you. trouble. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yes, please. <clears throat> please. So, so he acts in well, okay even though yeah. he acts in such a way he is never contaminated by his action he is therefore described herein as shuddha meaning always free from contamination the lord is also sama equal to everyone in this regard he states in bhagavad gita 9.29 Samo aham sarva bhuteshu name devasyo astina priyaha. The Lord has no one as his friend or enemy, and he is equal to everyone. So we can see Krishna, God, even though he's killing, his act is not sinful. Why? Because his intention is never to harm anyone. He, he does not want to harm. Even the people, the demons he's killing, he's giving them the highest benefit. They're getting liberation. So he's never sinful. And he's equal. God is equal to everyone. All the parents are equal to all their children. Yeah, but if there's one child who particularly wants to spend more time with the, with the parent, automatically the parent spends more time with them. That's natural. So the devotee wants to spend more time with God. So naturally God will spend time with him. The demon wants to go away from God. So God says, fine, you go. 
so is equal. The word satvya indicates that the form of the Lord is not material. It is Satchit Anand Vigraha. Ishvara Parama Krishna Sachit Anand Vigraha. His body is different from our material bodies. One should not think that the Supreme Personality of Godhead has a material body like ours. So is there a difference between our soul and our body? Yes, there is. Our body is material and our soul is transcendental. It's such a dhananda. What about Krishna? Is there a difference? that Does he have a soul that's separate from his body? No. no. In the case of Krishna, it's the same. It's transcendental. It's yeah. such a dhananda. Yeah, thank you. That's the difference. We come to the material world, we get covered. We get a material body. Krishna comes, never gets covered, never gets a material body. So is there's a difference between God and the individual soul. Maitri Ovacha. Maitri Ovacha. Iti prachod pracheto bhir abhi. Abhishtuto Harihe. Iti Pracheto Abhishtuto Harihe. Pritasthate te ahasharanya vatsala. Pritasthate te ahasharanya vatsala. Anichat. Tamyanam atrapta chakshusham. Anichatamyanam atrapta chakshusham. Yayo swadhama napavar gavirya. Yayo swadhama napavar gavirya. Yeah, 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 I'll continue reading. The great sage Maitre continued, My dear Vidhu, Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is, sorry, who is protector of the surrendered souls, being thus addressed by the Prachetas and worshipped by them, replied, May whatever you have prayed for be fulfilled. After saying this, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whose Provost is never defeated, left. The Prachetas were unwilling to be separated from him because they had not seen him to their full satisfaction. Should I read the purport also? The word yeah. Anaparvarga Viraya is significant in this verse. The word Ana means without. Pavarga means the materialistic way of life. And virya means prowess. The prowess of the Supreme Personality of Godhead always contains six basic opulences, one of which is renunciation. Although the Prachetas desired to see the Lord to their full satisfaction, the Lord left. According to Srila Jiva Goswami, this is an exhibition of his kindness to innumerable other devotees. Although he was being attracted by the Prachetas, he left. This is an example of his renunci renunciation. This renunciation was also exhibited by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he stayed with Advaita Prabhu after taking sannyas. All the devotees there wanted him to stay a few days longer, but Lord Chaitanya left without hesitation. The conclusion is that although the Supreme Lord has unlimited kindness for his devotees, he is not attached to anyone. He is equally kind to his innumerable devotees all over the creation. Which opulence is being spoken of here? The renunciation. Renunciation. Yeah, renunciation. 
that although they, he is getting so much love from the devotee, but he also has to go see his other devotees. They are also waiting for him. So this is what is being pointed out. You'll read? Yeah, okay. Athane Naya Salila 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 Prachetasya Unvantaha Prachetasya Udanvataha Vishaya Akupayan Drume Diksha Kubya Mundrem Channam Chatram gam gam rodram iv uchidate. Chanam gam gam rodum mi uchrite. The translation. Thereafter, all the prachetas emerged from the waters of the sea. They then saw that all the trees on the land had grown very tall, as if to obstruct the path to the heavenly planets. These trees had covered the entire surface of the world. At this time, the Prachetas became very angry. Purport. King Prachin Barhishad left his kingdom before his sons arrived after their execution of penance and austerity. The sons, the Prachetas, were ordered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead to come out of water and go to the kingdom of their father in order to take care of that kingdom. However, when they came out, they saw that everything had been neglected due to the king's absence. They first observed that food grains were not being produced and that there were no agricultural activities. Indeed, the surface of the world was practically covered by the very tall trees. It seemed as though the trees were determined to stop people from going into outer space to reach the heavenly kingdoms. The Prachetas became very angry when they saw the surface of the globe covered in this way. They desired that the land be cleared for crops. Do you want to explain? You can continue reading. Okay. okay. It is not a fact that jungles and trees attract clouds and rains because we find rainfall over the sea. Human beings can inhabit any place on the surface of the earth by clearing jungles and converting land for agricultural purposes. People can keep cows and all economic problems can be solved in that way. One need only work to produce grains and take care of the cows. The wood found in the jungle may be useful for constructing cottages. In this way, the economic problem of humanity can be solved. At the present moment, there are many vacant lands throughout the world. And if they are properly utilized, there will be no scarcity of food. As far as rain is concerned, it is performance of yagya that attracts rain, as stated in Bhagavad Gita. It's stated in Bhagavad Gita 3.14. An Anand Bhavanti Bhutani Pragyana Anya Sambhavaha Yagya Bhavanti Pragyano Yagna Karma Samud Bhavaha all living bodies subsist on food grains, which are produced from grains. Grains are produced by performance of yajna's sacrifice, and yajna is born of the prescribed duties. By performing sacrifice, man will have sufficient rainfalls and crops. Prabhupada is uh, pointing out that when we, what we need to do for rainfall, to have proper rainfall, Harinam Sankirtan. That is the duty of our, uh, that is 
of a duty in this age. Kali Yuga Dharma Hari Nam Sankirtan. By doing the Hari Nam Sankirtan, we can have enough rainfall. There is so much land, Prabhupada is pointing out, that is vacant. If that can be cultivated, crops can be grown, then there will be no economic problem. There will be no food problem. And if cows are protected, then everyone will become opulent. So living off the land. Tato Agni Maru Tora Jan Tato Agni Maru Tora Jan Amujan Mukato Rusha Amujan Mukato Rusha Mahim Nirviru Dampurtum Mahim Nirviru Dampurtum Sambataka Iva Atya Ye Sambataka Iva Atya Ye Translation, my dear king, at the time of devastation, Lord Shiva emits fire and air from his mouth out of anger. To make the surface of the earth completely treeless, the Prachetas also emitted fire and air from their mouths. Purport. In this verse, Vidura is addressed as a Rajan, which means O King. In this regard, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur comments that, that a dhira never becomes angry because he is always situated in devotional service. Advanced devotees can control their senses. Therefore, a devotee can be addressed as Rajan. A king controls and rules in the various ways among citizens. Similarly, one who can control his senses is the king of his senses. He is a Swami or Goswami. The Swamis and Goswamis are therefore sometimes addressed as Maharaj or King. So why sometimes a devotee is addressed as Raja? Because they can control their senses. Mm -hmm. He yeah. never gets angry. Yeah. That's right. So just as a king can control the citizens, the devotee is controlling the citizens. That's why there's similarity. That's why I said king. Basma Kriyamanam Tana Basma Kriyama Kriya Manasam Druman Vikshaya Pitamaha Druman Vikshaya Pitamaha Agat Sam Yam Asputran Agat Sam Yam Asputran Putran Bahishar Matanae Putran Bahis Matobunae After seeing that all the trees on the surface of the earth were being turned to ashes, Lord Brahma immediately came to the sons of King Barhishaman and pacified them with the words of logic. Purport, whenever there is some uncommon occurrence on any planet, Lord Brahma, being in charge of the whole universe, immediately comes to control the situation. Lord Brahma also came when Hiranyakashipu underwent severe penance and austerity and made the whole universe tremble. A responsible man in any establishment is always alert to keep peace and harmony within the establishment. Similarly, Lord Brahma is also allowed to keep peace and harmony within this universe. He Consequently, he pacified the sons of King Varishman with a good logic. Nice examples Prabhupada is giving, you know. Even in any big company, to keep everything working nicely. The management, they, they pacify. Sometimes somebody may get upset. So 
they pacify similarly lord brahma is always making sure the management is going nicely so he's come now to pacify the prachetas tatra avishishta ye vriksha tatra avishishta ye vriksha उपदृष्टा स्वयं भुवा उपदृष्टा स्वयं भुवा the remaining trees being very much afraid of the prachetas immediately delivered their daughter at the advice of lord brahma the daughters of the trees is referred to in text 13 of this chapter this daughter was born of kandu and pramlocha the society girl pramlocha after giving birth to the child immediately left for the heavenly kingdom while the child was crying the king of the moon took compassion upon her and saved her by putting his finger into her mouth this child was cared for by the trees and when she grew up by the order of lord brahma she was delivered to prachetas as their wife the name of the girl was marisha as the next verse will explain it was predominating deity of the trees that delivered the daughter in this connection shrila jeeva goswami prabhu pad states vriksha tadra adri drishta devata the trees means the controlling deity of those trees in the vedic literature we find that there is a controlling deity of the water similarly there is a controlling deity of the trees the prachetas were engaged in burning all the trees to ashes and they considered the tree their enemies to pacify the prachetas the predominating deity of the trees under the advice of lord brahma delivered the daughter marisha so as lord vishnu had already told them no he had told them that okay you're going to get married you all get married to this daughter of pramlocha who has been taken care of by the trees so that's what's happening now and propa this helping us understand that there's a controlling deity like and there's controlling deity of fire also controlling deity of the earth controlling deity similarly there's controlling deity of the trees and that deity that personality is coming forth and handing over the daughter because we may in our mind we may think oh it's the tree that's coming you know but there is a person coming teja brahman adeshat teja brahman adeshan mari sham upaye mere mari sham upaye mere फॉलोइंग द ऑर्डर्स ऑफ लॉर्ड ब्रह्मा ऑल द प्रचेतास एक्सेप्टेड द गर्ल एज देर वाइफ from the womb of this girl the son of lord brahma named daksha took birth daksha had to take birth from the womb of marishya due to his disobeying and disrespecting lord mahadev shiva consequently he had to give up his body twice in this connection the word mahat avigyanath shabd is significant 
King Daksha was the son of Lord Brahma. Therefore, in a previous birth, he was a Brahmin. But because of his behaving like a non-Brahmin, a Brahmana, by insulting or disrespecting Lord Mahadev, he had to take birth within the semen of a Kshatriya. That is to say, he became the son of Prachetas. Not only that, but because his disrespecting Lord Shiva, he had to undergo the turbulation of taking birth from within the womb of a woman. In the Daksha Yagna arena, he was once killed by Lord Shiva's servant, Virabhadra, because that was not sufficient. He again took birth from the womb of Marisha. At the end of Daksha Yagna and the disastrous incident there, Daksha offered his prayers to Lord Shiva. Although he had to give up his body and take birth from the womb of a woman impregnated by the semen of Kshatriya, he received all opulence by the grace of Lord Shiva. These are the subtle laws of material nature. Unfortunately, people in this modern age do not know how these laws are working. Having no knowledge of the eternity of the spirit soul and its transmigration, the population of the present age is in the greatest ignorance because this, it is said in Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam 1.1.10 Mandaha Sumanda Matya Manda Bhagya Hi Upradrutya The total population in this age of Kalyu is very bad, lazy, unfortunate and disturbed by the material condition. So transmigration. You can see how the soul is transmigration. So this is transmigrating. So this is Daksh. And he is now being born of Arisha because of his um, disrespect to Lord Shiva. Because Lord Brahma, when he was creating his sons, it's not that he needed any woman to create. No, he just created them. And so that's why it said that now because Daksh, he disrespected Lord Shiva, he had to now come from a womb, which is very uncomfortable. So I did suffering. But anyway, he still got in opulence by the grace of Lord Shiva. So he's also then the son of the Prachetas in the second time like yeah. this, right? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. tu antare prapte. Chakshushet antarapte. Praksar ge kal bi drute. Praksar ge kal bi drute. Ya sar saj praja ishta. Ya sar saj praja ishta. Sar daksho dev choditaha. Sar daksho dev choditaha. His previous body has been destroyed, but he, the same Daksha, inspired by the Supreme Will, created all the desired living entities in the Chakshusha Manvantara. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 8.17, Sahasra Yug Parayantam Ahar Yad Brahmano Viduha Ratrim Yuga Sahasranam Te Aho Ratra Vidho Gyanaha Vidhojanaha, by human calculation, a thousand ages taken together is the duration of Brahma's one day. And such also is the duration of his night. Brahma's one day consists of 1000 cycles of the four yugas, Satya, Treta, Dwapar and Kali. In that one day, there are 14 manvantaras. And out of these manvantaras, this Chakshusha manvantara is the 16th. Sixth. Sixth. The, sorry, sixth. The various manus existing in one day of, of Brahma are as follows. Swayam Bhumanu, Sarochisha, Uttam, Tamas, Revata, 
चक्षुषा व्यवस्था सावर्णी दक्ष सवर्णी ब्रह्म सावर्णी धर्म सावर्णी रुद्र सावर्णी देव सावर्णी एंड इंद्र सावर्णी Thus, there are fourteen manus in one day of Brahma. In a year, there are five thousand forty manus. Brahma has to live for one hundred years. Consequently, the total of manus appearing and disappearing during the life of one Brahma is fifty thousand. Ah, uh, sorry, you wait ten hundred thousand. Five lakh four thousand. this is the calculation of one universe and there are innumerable universes all these manus come and go simply by the breathing process of mahavishnu as stated in brahma samhita yasika nirvastita kalam atavalayam bha जीवंति लोमा विजलया जगत अनंदनाथ विष्णु ईशा यस्य काल विशेषो गोविंदमादि पुरुषम तम अहम भजामि द वर्ड जगत अनंदनाथ मींस लॉर्ड ब्रह्मा देयर आर इन्यूमरेबल जगत अंडनाथ ब्रह्मास एंड दस वी कैन कैलकुलेट द मेनी मनुस The present age is under the control of Vivastha Manu. Each Manu lives forty three hundred twenty thousand forty three lakh. Um, sorry, you know, four million, four million, four million, three hundred twenty thousand years multiplied by seventy one. The present Manu has already lived four forty three lakh twenty thousand years multiplied by twenty eight. all these long life spans are ultimately ended by the laws of material nature the controversy of the daksha yagya took place in the swayamvu mantra period as a result daksha was punished by lord shiva but by virtue of his prayers to lord shiva he became eligible to regain his former opulence according to Vivantaka Chakra, uh, Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur, Daksha underwent severe penance up to fifth Manvantara. Thus, at the beginning of the sixth Manvantara, known as Chakshusha Manvantara, Daksha regained his former opulence by the blessings of Lord Shiva. Wow. He underwent austerities for such a long time, from Swayambhuva Manu Stain to Chakshusha. Manu's time. So all this time he was undergoing austerities. It was amazing the lifespan. You know? So that oh, means he was man. really feeling bad what he did, right? He was really yeah. regretting what he did. Well, that doesn't say that, but he was just doing a lot of. Penances, and that's how he got to his former opulence. That's what's pointed out. Yeah, but I'm just a... wondering that that does did he regret it? That's why he did, or he just wanted to please Lord Shiva because he has, you know, made him angry and disrespected him. Or did he want to gain his opulence? Oh. So I don't know. It's not being said here because it's just being pointed out that he did the austerities. <laughs> And he got his former opulence. But of course, he prayed to Lord Shiva. By virtue of his prayers to Lord Shiva, he became eligible to regain his former opulence. So he prayed, he prayed, and he became opulent again. Daksha was a prajapati. You know, he is a great personality. Prajapati means he's. Giving birth to so many, so much population, so much power, so much responsibility. So that's what he got it again. Then that's being said here. So I'm sure he, there would be some regret also. That's the reason he did this up this kind of uh, austerity for such a long time. Yeah, should be some regret there too. Because he lost all his opulence, and he, yeah. 
in the present age, Manu, they mentioned, right? Yeah, this present age is Vaivasta Manu. It's the seventh Manu. So as we just said, seven. Out of seven, fourteen. Out of 14, I mean, out of fourteen, seventh Manu and Manu twenty seventy one. Chatur Yuga. So this is the twenty eighth. That's the Krishna comes in that no. Uh, in the twenty eighth millennium. The present Manu has lived for 4,320,000 years multiplied by 28. So Krishna always comes in one day of Brahma in the life of the seventh Manu in the 28th millennium. So that's what is going on now because Krishna just came 5,000 years ago. Yeah. And the name of this Manu is Vaivasta Manu. Yojayamana Sarve Sham. Yojayamana Sarve Sham. Teja Tejas Vinam Rucha. Tejas Tejas Vinam Rucha. Swayo Upadat Dakshayat. Swayo Padat Padat Dakshayat. Karmanam Daksham Abu Branatam. Karma nam daksham abruvan. Tam praja sarga rakshayam. Tam praja sarga rakshayam. Anadi abhishit cha. Anadi abhishit cha. Yuyo jo yuyo je anyan. You yo ja you jiya anyam sha Save sarva prajapati Save sarva prajapati After being born Daksh by the super excellence of his bodily luster covered all other bodily opulence because he was very expert in performing fruitive activity. He was called by the name Daksha, meaning the very expert. Lord Brahma therefore engaged Daksh in the work of generating living entities and maintaining them. In due course of time, Daksh also engaged other Prajapatis, progenitors into the process of generation and maintenance. Daksh became almost as powerful as Lord Brahma. Consequently, Lord Brahma engaged him in generating population. Daksh was very influential and opulent. In his own turn, Daksh engaged other Prajapatis headed by Marichi. In this way, the population of the universe increased. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purport of the fourth canto, 30th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled the activities of the Prichetas. Did anyone want to add anything, comment anything? I just have a question. So even after this also, Daksha had the same purpose. He still did the same thing, right? Yes. Yes. He's again become a Prajapati. Again, he's Populating because that was his original mm -hmm. service that was mm -hmm. given to him. Now again, he's continuing with the same. Okay. That's, That's why the population is increased so much. <laughs> is it? <laughs> huh? That's why the population of this universe <laughs> increased so much. Yes, yeah. yes. That's right. That's oh. right. So we'll stop here for today. Shla Prabhupada Kitchen, Gold Bhakti Thank you so much for listening and enjoying.